Hey guys, everyone. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Dark Spider David. <laughs> Hey guys, Dark Spider David here. Time for another redo review. Taking a look back at the Transformers movie line. We'll be taking a look at Deluxe Class Jazz. Now, of course, he was in the movie and he appeared in the about you know the last hour or so. They made him a you know a very you know modern robot with that language and the accent and the voice and. You know, there were some controversial issues with that. But anyway, here we have Jazz, or like it says in the packaging, Autobot Jazz, because they couldn't use the name Jazz anymore. Anyway, he is a Pontiac Solstice. I have seen a few number of these models around uh, lately. Uh, however, judging by the, you know, the models that I've seen and the images and actually seeing Jazz up on the screen... This almost does not look like a Pontiac Solstice. It does right here at the front, but over here in the back, trust me, guys, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, like I, like it, you see here, he is gray. That's it, a very dull gray. They did release a premium uh, version of this figure, but, I mean, it's just a repaint. We got some, you know, glittery turquoise blue right here for the headlights, as well as some yellow for the fog lights, some red for the Pontiac Solstice symbol, as well as the backlights here. We got some black right there. I don't know why. We got some trans translucent blue plastic for the wind windshield and the windows. Why would it have translucent blue? I have no idea. It's got some nice looking rims, you know, kind of modern, kind of uh, stylized. We got the weapon right here in the back. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm not going to show it yet. Move it to the side. We have a uh, moving spoiler, which is kind of nice, but, well, you know, it's nice to resemble the Pontiac Solstice, but it doesn't, you know, help out that much. But he he feels too boxy, and he's very, you know, he's he's very square-like to be a, a Solstice. I don't know, in my opinion, he doesn't, you know, look like the vehicle that we see up on screen at all. We got almost no robot cable, so at least that's a good uh, point for him. But that's it for his uh, vehicle mode. That's transforming onto his robot mode. First thing you want to do is flip this up. Then you're going to take this whole back portion here and rotate it down. This whole thing right here. Then you're going to fit that peg into that hole right there, which is going to be his crutch, or at least his torso. Like so. And you're going to rotate what are going to be the legs down. Then you're going to take these two pieces right here and rotate them and, uh, you know, extend them ever so slightly. Then you're going to rotate the lower leg forwards. Then you're gonna flip down the feet. Let me see if I can reach in here. All right, there you go. And inside the feet are the heels, so go ahead and take them out. So that'll help them stand a lot better. Let's pan up the camera. Now here's the difficult part. You're going to reach in here. Well, not really reach, but you're going to press on these a little bit and try to open the uh, front hood up outwards So you and just flip the two pieces out, including the piece with the wheel. Oh, man, it's tough. Trust me. It's almost, it almost feels breakable, but you're going to take these pieces outwards. Those are going to be his arms. Oh, man. Alright, there you go. And you got two big flaps. <laughs> then you're gonna take this this piece back here, like right there. And you're gonna flip it back to get it out of the way and flip it back to the wheel. Like so you're gonna take this right here and flip it outwards. The same thing with the other arm. Flip this up.
Now you, you're gonna t get inside this uh, flap here and inside you're gonna reach out and pull out the hands and then you're gonna flip the panel inwards to form the arms like so. Same thing with the other arm. Alright. Now here's his automorph. Pressing on the whole roof of the car down is gonna It's gonna pop out his head and the hood is gonna or the front of the car is gonna reassemble. And since he's all short, I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera down a little bit. Jazz was the shortest of the Autobots. Not Bumblebee, like everybody says. So here we have Autobot Jazz. Like I said, he's short. He's very stubby. He's very... He suffers from being bi-produced. Meaning that he was probably most likely made by two separate teams. One working on the bottom of the body and one working on the top. At the top, he feels so fibble and so weak and his arms look like complete crap. I mean, look at that. And his legs are very well detailed. I mean, look at that. Some awesome machinery there. But very stubby and very fat. I mean, he doesn't look like this in like he does in the movie. In the movie, he looks, uh, you know... He looks equal on both, you know, parts of the body. He looks stable. He looks sturdy. He looks great. Here, I don't know. It just feels like... Honestly, Hasbro, some more thought would have been put into this figure. We got a lot of empty space right here, a lot of black. Uh, he's got a nice-looking head on a ball joint so he could, you know, look all around. He's got no, almost no articulation in his arm because it's almost not an arm. He's got some okay articulation in the legs, but other than that, that's almost it. He's got some okay detail here and there. He's got the yeah, he's got the Autobot symbol on his crotch. What's up with that? Right there. Like, hey, look at this. I'm an Autobot. Ooh, you're looking. He stands pretty well, I could give you that. I mean <laughs> you know, there's almost no chance of him you know, just simply toppling over whenever he wants to. And to get make matters worse, here we got his uh uh weapon. It's a telescopic sword, meaning you take this out and it's supposedly a sword. How is that a sword? I don't know. It looks more like a very elongated gun. Uh, it looks alright, but still, I mean, come on. You put it underneath his, inside his arm, actually. There's a little hole in there. Fit the peg into the hole, and there you go. Yeah, bogus. I give Jazz a 7.8, which is a C+. Simply for effort, because, I mean, come on. This guy would have been better. In my opinion, I think Jazz is one of those figures that have to be redone for the new Revenge of the Fallen movie. So that's it for this review, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.